Hey everybody, this is Elio, Five Freaking Onion Rings. And first off, I stand with everyone who's out protesting and out marching because this is a problem that needs to be fixed. And it's 400 years in the making and go out and fix it. So it's really difficult right now for any YouTuber to be putting out content. And, you know, the show must go on, but we need, we have things to fix. With that being said, hi! This is Sully, Five Freaking Onion Rings, and I have something today that's a little different for me because it is so much better than what I normally fly. It's, it's just better than what I buy. If you're new to the channel, you might not know, but I am known as being a little bit cost conscious. Uh, there's another word for it. Cheap, 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 cheap. Let's say cheap, fine, cheap person. Uh, I, I like I like things that cost a lot less. It, cheap, cheap's the word for it, yeah. So anyway, I am known for that. I, I One of my favorite quads is 79 bucks, 75 bucks with a receiver. It's a Tiro 69, one of my favorite quads. It is so much fun to fly. I love it, it's great. It does exactly what I want it to do. This though is an F7 board, a Zeiss F7, with an MPU 6000, 128 megs of onboard memory, OSD, a 5 volt 3 amp back, a 60 amp ESC, BL Heli 32 ESC, RPM filtering, the whole nine yards in a premium package that is phenomenal. And I say that just off the top, comes with everything you need for a flight stack for $107, including LED strips. And the good thing about it, you can break this part down. Now say that repeatedly through here. You can buy just the flight controller, you can buy just the ESC, and you can buy just the light strips. But everything in the package, $107. So I've broken out this kit. You get your flight controller, ESC, and lighting combination. One good thing is that you can buy the flight controller separately, you can buy the ESC separately, and the light kit separately, and you will not pay a premium. That's good. Starting off, you get your XT60 with very good silicone wires. Very, very good. They're, I believe they are 16 gauge. They're very thick, uh, namely to hold up to a 60 amp ESC. You have your flight controller on the left, two ribbon cables, four aluminum knurled standoffs, four aluminum nuts, two of the gummy mounts. I love these things, two gummy mounts. And these are worthless. I hate these. I'll be honest. I do not like these. Uh, they're so you can make push pins, whatever. Does not matter. But you do get a spare ribbon cable to connect your ESC and flight controller. And of course you get your F7 flight controller. You get a 60 amp ESC, uh, BL Heli 32. We will go over all of these specs in detail in a second. But BL Heli 32, 60 amp ESC, two 35 volt mic 470 microfarad capacitors, four more standoffs, aluminum with neural knobs, and two more gummies. That's with the ESC kit. With the lighting kit, you get four LED lights and two spare, two spare cables in case you break any of the other cables that are connected. Okay, so this is the flight controller. If you notice, this is the back. It is angled in to make it easier to mount. Has all of your components. I want you to take a close look at just how perfectly arranged these are. I am blown away by that. Anyway, you have your connectors for your LED cables. They just plug right in. You have your ribbon connector. That's the only extraneous connectors you have. Everything else has these really nice solder pads that actually go all the way around the board. And I think that is just really cool along with the notches that come out. Everything is screen printed and labeled beautifully. So let's get back in focus. Your V3TX, video out, ground, ground VTX. I believe that's just an empty spot. Uh, so yeah, you have your, what is with the focus? Five volt, another VTX coming in here. Just looking at quality at the moment. Um, UART, every UART's labeled, transmit, receive, U4. You have VRX again. Wow, another. <laughs> another, another. 
and the connectors. Also, if you happen to break your ribbon canaveral, you can connect here as well. And there's a pin out in the local, uh, in the online instructions. Now, as far as features of this board, it's an F7, it's an 8S capable, but this whole stack is only 6S capable because of the ESCs. It has an LC filter for 5 volt VTX. It does not have a 10 volt out, so you can jumper your VTX to run off VBAT, but you're basically limited to either VBAT or 5 volt. It's your choice. There is a line, an LC filter for that 5 volt. It has six available UARTs. It has a VTX switch to control on off with the VTX from your transmitter. So even if you don't have uh, smart audio um, on your VTX, it will still allow you to turn off your VTX from your transmitter. Uh, very good in cases of overheating or if you wreck and you don't want to blind someone's signal uh, or if you haven't given someone a warning, you know, nice little things like that. Everything on it is just labeled and spectacular. I'm, I'm just blown away by how everything's laid out. It does use the USB Type-C, so it's not a micro USB, it's a Type-C, which is great because you can just flip it upside down. It comes with the gummies pre-installed, which I'm a fan of that because I always have trouble squeezing those things in. It just drives me crazy. has an onboard L RGB LED distribution, which is the, these and onboard RGB LED itself, which is over here, I believe. The notch design on sides and fronts, which you'll see here. It's just made so that the board itself doesn't get in the way. And yeah, has a 128 megabyte onboard flash, OSD, obviously, and an STM32F722MCU with the great MPU6000 gyro. Only a single gyro though. So uh, yeah, if you want dual gyro, you won't get it from this board, but quite honestly, who cares at that point? It does have a five volt BEC with a three amp output, continuous. So pretty much anything you want to run off this board, you're going to be able to run and you're going to be really happy with it. It's freaking phenomenal. Uh, that's all I got to say about it. I am taking note here of the component layout, and it is just quality. It's also designed in Italy, which I thought was very interesting. It does have a current meter, current sensor, and yeah, designed in Italy. And obviously the front of the board up here, back of the board back here, that goes on the side, and the side is up going to jump over now to my favorite part and that is this 60 amp BL Heli 32 ESC comes with a 35 volt 470 microfarad capacitor it comes with two in case you pop it has the negative symbol on the, the negative terminal because they didn't leave one terminal long so it's negative um, does do that comes also with the knurled, I love these, the knurled grip standoffs. And looking at this, has a heat sink for the MOSFETs. This is only 6S capable. So just so you know, it's 6S capable, especially with the 35 volt capacitor, 6S capable only. Once again, like the other, if you happen to break off this, you have all of your pad outputs here and you can solder to the top, bottom, or sides, does not matter. I think that is what really sets this apart to me from any other type of ESC I've ever dealt with. The back layout, very, very, very clean, perfectly soldered, everything's in line. I hate when these look like someone who basically has my quality control putting them in. I love it when they line up. I love it when they are gorgeously presented. I love it when they're perfectly soldered in place. I, this is an OCD dream of an ESC. 32 bit, so you will get RPM filtering, does have the current sensor. I don't know where that solder came from, so I'm kind of wondering about that one. Uh, if I were to find a fault on here, it would be that. I don't know if that solder was just a remnant or whatnot, but anyway, that's not that big of a deal as long as that piece is actually 
Good. I did not see that before I started filming the review, obviously. Or I would have seen it. Anyway, we have everything lined up. We do have a big heat sink, and this thing is huge uh, as far as heat sinks go. And weight on it, weight on the ESC itself is 22 and a half grams, which is pretty substantial. Uh, weight on the flight controller, not that you'll care, 8 grams. 8 grams. Wow, okay, yeah, 7.8. So a 30 gram stack, not too bad. Um, these are not components where you would worry about weight. However, in the case of an ESC, I like the heavier ones because they tend to distribute heat much, much better. Um, I will say the ESC itself goes for about $60. And generally, my rule of thumb is, even in my cheapskate form, for a 4-in-1 ESC, you pay about a dollar per amp um, at a point. So a $20 ESC should be about 20, 25 amps if you're, if you're good. And that's, that's on the smaller 20 millimeter size. Um, but yeah, so I was kind of surprised that the CSC was uh, honestly $60 because it's 32 bit and it's just great. So I don't consider the price of premium on it to be that much if you're looking for a component like this. I'm kind of just, I was blown away at the amount of detail they put just allowing you to solder. I mean, you can say, Solder top, bottom, side, does not matter. I love this. It doesn't have the cutouts, but I don't, I don't always like the cutouts um, where, the, where it has the little cutouts for each of the motors. I don't always like that. And it is well spaced apart. This is my finger, and I mean, I'm, I'm getting a ton of space in between each one. And even the XT60 is not too flexible, not too hard but huge cables, huge cables to me. Like these are freaking, they don't bend very well. They are, they're monster sized. One thing I did notice with the ESC, uh, two holes here. So whenever you go to mount your capacitor, sometimes it's hard to get everything to stick. So they gave you holes, pass through holes for mounting, which I thought was really cool. Um, if I don't drop everything. But anyway, they give you pass-through holes because sometimes mounting, getting solder to stick to these is a pain. But once you stick it in, drop a bit of solder in, it is never going anywhere. You're more likely to break the prongs than you are to break the bond. Now, the other thing that feels good with this that kind of blew me away in a way I was not expecting, this is the RGB light strip, not something I wanted because I don't care about RGB light strips, but it came as part of the kit. They are programmable fully. Bright as all get out from what I've seen. And one thing that surprised me with it is that this isn't clear shrink wrap as much as an actual acrylic protective piece. It is not at all flexible. Well, it's flexible, but it's not crazy flexible. It feels like it's more plastic wrap than heat shrink. It's, it's very protective. Um, also, it just feels good. And all wires in this kit are silicone, just so you know. They fit very well, very easily, no force, no pressure. These are very delicate, though, so when you do mount them to the arms, make sure you protect them. Gummies come with this part. It's gummies. They're just gummy. I love the knurled. You never have to go looking for one of those tiny M3 type, uh, the M3 hex heads. I hate looking for those. I hate trying to fit those in. It just drives me crazy. So you do have tops. They're red. It's like a Ferrari setup, but they're just red aluminum screws or aluminum nuts. Very, very good. So one last thing I wanted to put on this. It assembles by fingers and there is a tiny, tiny amount of daylight. So it is a tight stack underneath. It is absolutely perfectly fitted together. Uh, it's very easy to assemble with these knurled fittings. So you never have to look for those stupid screws. You can actually tighten it all the way down if you want. 
and still get some motion. So your flight controller is very well isolated. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but there is a tiny gap between the LED and the ESC underneath. And it is a tiny, tiny, tiny gap. Uh, so I was impressed by that. I was afraid it was going to smash in uh, because I over tightened it or I thought I over tightened, but nope. It's just the tiniest of gaps that you can barely see in there. And I wanted to point that out because I am a thorough fan of this. Blown away. Also, this ribbon just fits right in and uh, gives you everything you need from your ESC. Obviously, it has RPM filtering and Ooh, I am excited. I can't wait. Is it worth it? Back to that the whole question, you know, should you buy it? The answer is if you are a five inch racer who needs 60 amps up to 6S and you have the budget for it, you will not go wrong with this. It has plenty of future proofing. It will die from being bashed around way before it dies from being obsolete or you you screw it up like it's 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 rock solid i highly doubt you will ever explode the escs unless you're running like a beast and i couldn't imagine you're doing that is it worth it i'm gonna go with the nick burns approach it's it, it might be worth it for you if your use case is a 60 amp esc with an f7 board needing a lot of open uarts and 107 dollars really isn't that bad you're looking at 40 something for the flight controller and you're looking at 60 something for a 60 amp ESC with a heat sink, great MOSFETs, and a fantastic layout, along with the capacitors, everything you need. It's it's phenomenal. Like it is phenomenal. So I'm gonna leave it on that. Anyway, thank you so much. Black Lives Matter. I'm standing with you. I hope at the end of the day things get better. And by the way, if you have COVID hair, and what I call COVID hair is uh South Carolina had its highest reported number of cases the other day, so the propensity of me going to a barber shop, not for a while, I gotta tell you. So if you got some COVID hair, leave me a thanks and a thumbs up down below. Um, yeah, like solidarity with the COVID hair. And I wanna thank you so much. Like I say, Zeese, it's good stuff, good stuff. Y'all have a good one.